Hello, guys. Welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. I'm your astrologer, Lori Lothian. And today I'm looking at Joe Biden's chart. And I want to look at, excuse my squeaky chair, some of the asteroids in his chart, um, like Philia for Philadelphia and Georgia for, of course, Georgia, where he is now slightly leading uh, Donald Trump in the counting of the votes. And I am going to say asteroids can be very useful in this stuff. And thank you, Louise Eddington of Cosmic Owl Astrology for poking me around that asteroid Georgia, which I hadn't uh, looked at until today. Today is uh, November the 6th at 3.30 in the afternoon. And so I'm doing this recording before checking what's going on with Georgia. I just know that it was really close this morning with um, Biden leading. Uh, I'm Canadian. I'm not political. I'm not, I don't have a, an affiliation with the politics of the United States. Please don't troll me. All right. So let's take a look at the chart. Um, why are asteroids important? Because you know what? I have a client who's a sommelier. She's got the asteroid Bacchus, the goddess of wine on her midheaven, your career point of the chart. I have a client who channels David Bowie. She's got the asteroid David Bowie on the top of her chart. These are the devils in the details kind of thing. And there's like more than 20,000 asteroids that have been named that are circling through the asteroid belt. And it is interesting when you find names of asteroids that play a role in a person's life. It, it's beyond interesting. It makes you realize that our lives are preordained. I mean, you could you say to somebody, you know, when they're 15 or 20 that they're going to be a sommelier when they grow up and then find out because I, an astrologer, have noticed the gods of wine are on their midheaven. <laughs> or even more specifically, the woman who channels David Bowie always had the asteroid on her midheaven from the moment of birth. And now she channels David Bowie. Like, it's so cool. I'll put a link to her stuff down below. She's really cool. So let's go ahead and share the screen um, of Joe. Okay, so here's Joe Biden's chart, and this is going to be short. I just want to share some of the magic of asteroids, and I'll look at the transiting asteroids as well. So basically, uh, I don't have Philadelphia, but I have philia, which means brotherly love, and it is Philadelphia is named for brotherly love. Um, as of today, the votes from Philadelphia, which are, have come in, are 80, 80 mail-in votes kind of thing, are 86% for Trump, uh, Biden, and or something like that, and way less for uh, Donald Trump, which is allowed the gap between the two to uh, close. And, um, you know, I don't know if Biden is in the lead right now, but he could very well be. So what you can see here is the asteroid Georgia is on Neptune, uh, 11 degrees off of Neptune. That's hopes, dreams, and wishes, enlightenment, uh, but also things that are like fuzzy or unclear or, you know, foggy in the house of justice, justice, scales of justice, pretty well guaranteed there's going to be another one of those uh, Trump camp, uh, GOP Trump people lawsuits about the Georgia count, no matter what, you can just see it. Even though it makes sense that the urban count is why he the votes went up for Biden, because uh, it's counting uh, cities like Atlanta, which are progressive and Democrat. So you can see that Georgia has a particularly uh, interesting place in the chart, and that it is even if you look at the vertex, which represents life turning points and major pivot points in the life of the native, in this case, Joe Biden, you can see that that Georgia is in a relationship to the 17 degree vertex. That's pretty interesting. And that is a square. So Georgia can be a pivot point in the life of Joe Biden. Um, of course, if he wins it, I don't, I can't remember, maybe it's 20 something electoral votes. It will put him over the top to become the president elect of the United States during the 2020 election. Also, we want to look at Philadelphia because there is an asteroid for Philia and Philadelphia is in his second house of self-worth and self-esteem and values and earnings and stuff like that at 12 degrees. And it is literally, huh, also right in touch with the uh, six degrees off the vertex It's actually in his anti-vertex, which again is still a pivotal turning point place. And uh, even though Philadelphia is only one city, it is the votes of the Philadelphia population, which are primarily the black vote that is topping up Biden's um, vote count and maybe will take him over the edge to the electoral college win there. Um, and it's interesting that in ancient astrology, Capricorn is considered the sign of dark-skinned people. And it's Philadelphia in the sign of dark-skinned people where his Philadelphia is in relationship to the part of his chart that represents pivotal turning points, all right? And potentially very good turning points because of Jupiter on the vertex. Jupiter is opportunity and growth and expansion. Exalted Jupiter, woo, like a super-powered, super high-status Jupiter. Um, you know, obviously, he, this is a wealth signature in his chart as well, stands to inherit or be wealthy in life because it's the eighth house of 
wealth and money. But nonetheless, it's still Jupiter within shooting range of the vertex, like eight degrees off within a conjunction. And so this vertex is also part of the Jupiter story. So you can also say that, you know, even though Georgia at 12 is really applying to the vertex and Philadelphia or Philia, Philia is on the anti-vertex, they all are getting some residual energy off of that Jupiter. Okay, um, that's just pretty darn cool if you ask me. And technically then Georgia creates a, a, a T-square between the vertex and the anti-vertex. So Georgia could be a very pivotal piece of the story in the sign of justice where a court ruling or a court uh, cases around the count in Georgia could be very, very important to uh, George, Joe Biden's presidency or lack of presidency. Now, since I'm already in Joe Biden's chart, let's, let's do a couple other things. Maybe then I'll put Trump in the chart and see where those planets fall. I will do that, those asteroids. Just a gentle reminder of the bigger picture, right? Transits alone don't count without looking at time lords in ancient Hellenistic tradition. You can say a few things about Joe's time lords until November 20th, right? He's at the age of 78. Well, we can say, what is this time lord? His time lord at 78 is, this is 72, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He's under the time lordship of Mercury. Mercury going direct on the day of the election by stationing and pivoting to face forward as Mercury's this time lord of the year should benefit him. The direct motion of Mercury should be a beneficial direction movement for Joe Biden. However, you can see that his time lord will change on his birthday or even in the month of November, if you use a whole sign month, into the moon, into the lunar ruled eighth house energy. Joe Biden moving into an eighth house perfection age may not be considered to be positive. It's a house of death. It's a house of hidden things, but it has some, some sweetness here because it's got exalted Jupiter. So we can pretty well say, and the vertex, that things could look really good for him by moving in the month of November, in this election time, into the energy of that exalted Jupiter, um, which is the exalted leader or you know, the leader up high or, uh, you know, a person at, at receiving great public acclaim. It's in the sign of cancer, the masses. Um, so, or rising and being elevated amongst the people. Okay, so there's good news with that perfection age for Joe. Now, because it's a lunar ruled year, year, all the eclipses, solar and lunar, will have a great impact on, on him in the year ahead. So he's kind of at the mercy of the eclipse cycle. <laughs> I'm not going to talk, and the, and the full moon and new moons, of course, as well. I'm not going to go into all the eclipses right now um, at this point, but just to point that out, like I would say Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump's in trouble <laughs> because uh, there's an eclipse that's going to impact him directly. Um, I can't remember which one it is, if it's a December 14th or no, I think it's a November 30th eclipse, my land right on one of Donald Trump's uh, sun or moon. So I think it's a sun. So Donald Trump's courtesy of the November 30th lunar eclipse uh, that happens at eight degrees of Gemini may indeed be eclipsed as the president of the United States. We'll get back to that in a minute. But uh, Joe, Trump, Joe, Joe Biden is very, very much influenced right now by the eclipse cycle. Already um, this year ahead um, and the next year as well as he moves into a solar world year. So what else can I say before I move on to check Trump and those asteroids? I think that's it. Oh, I'm really just wanting to investigate the asteroids. That was the whole point here. So I'm going to now put Donald Trump in this story and see where the asteroids fall for him of those two places. Okay, I know I have Trump in here, so let's go for Donald. All right, so here's Donald Trump's chart. And let's just take a peek at the asteroids. Oh, I forgot to tell you where the asteroids were transiting on Joe Biden. Oh, well, so, so well, didn't do it. Um, this is just a quickie, uh, election update quickie, you know? Okay, so uh, looking along here at the planetary alignments, there's Georgia in Donald Trump's 12th house of karma and hidden things, things that are hidden from view. Um, and interestingly, also conjunct Saturn, the great restrictor, the great squisher or repressor or control energy. Um, Saturn is a malefic. Uh, now, Donald Trump was born during the day, so it's less intensely malefic for him than, say, Mars, but there is just that. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, Georgia is on his Mercury, which is uh, ballots, <laughs> post office, mail, mail in ballots, Georgia. Sometimes this stuff is so literal. Um, okay, and let's take a look at Philia. There's Philia in his third house. 
uh, on his Neptune. Of course, that was, you know, happening, but it's exactly on his Neptune uh, for Joe as well. So philia on his Neptune perfectly conjunct, uh, confusion, deception, manipulation uh, can be the dark sides of Neptune. Uh, so I think that Donald Trump will try to sow some serious confusion on the situation for sure. Let's just see what's going on with it. And it's in the scales of justice, of course. So going to court over Philadelphia during the, in the Libra, sign of Libra in the transit. So he's born to experience some kind of legal stuff around confusing, manipulative, deceptive legal stuff around the philia, which can be Philadelphia, which equals Pennsylvania, and then Georgia over here in the house of hidden things. Now with this position, uh, this doesn't really feel good to me because of the co-presence of Chiron, the wounded healer, the woundedness here. Um, let's take a look at the transits. So. Biden has a stronger chart for the placement of asteroid Georgia and asteroid Philia, for sure. Now, looking at the transits of those two babies, let's take a look. Where are you? Uh, do, 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 do. There's Georgia. Uh, and it is right now, as I speak, uh, we speak, it is pretty well at the um, 21 degrees. It's on his moon. Oh, it's on Donald Trump's moon in his fifth house. but it's also on a south node. His south node is conjunct his moon. He was born during a full moon eclipse. So, and it's opposing his sun. And the south node is to let go, to release, to surrender, to lose something. It's a losing this. So he's gonna lose Georgia because Georgia is on his south node. So he's gonna lose Georgia. I'm not gonna make, he's not gonna get the state. Um, then the, the, the Philadelphia, which I'm trying to use as a proxy for Pennsylvania right now, the Philia asteroid is in his 12th house of hidden things and it's sitting on his Venus, uh, the house of hidden enemies. Okay, I'm gonna call a spade a spade. I think Amy Coney Barrett is going to rule with the more progressive direction of the courts regarding election lawsuits if anything goes to the Supreme Court. And maybe something with Pennsylvania will go to the Supreme Court because there is that 4-4 tie with the justices that uh, allowed the state of Pennsylvania to retain the new rule that was passed that they could have elections ballots that were mailed in counted until um, the 3rd of November, as long as they not not cast after the election day, I'm sorry, the 6th of November, not cast after election day, just received and counted until the 6th of November. That tie tie could be broken by Amy Coney Barrett, new justice of the Supreme Court. That's what the Democrat, the Republicans were hoping would happen because a lot of those late ballots are mailed in ballots which are democratic. Well, guess what? This is the hidden female enemy in his chart. Believe me, he has a lot of female enemies behind the scenes. I'm still waiting for Melania to come up with her tell-all book once this whole thing is over. So a uh, philia on this Venus, I do believe this is a Supreme Court redo of the Thai decision. And it will not rule in favor of what Trump would like to have happen because the female justice that he put in that, play, that court place with the Mitch McConnell at all will rule with her true heart. She's a chameleon. I'll do a video on her. She's got a Neptune sextile to the sun. She can be what all people want her to be, but she's also deeply spiritual. And I think she's a good person. And I think she will actually upend the expectations of her placement to be a member of team Kavanaugh and all of that. So, okay, and Gorsuch. Alrighty guys, that's it. That's just a real quick saying because of the asteroids, you look what's gonna happen. If you wanna do a reading with me, God, I have, I always use minor asteroids in your chart. We dig a little bit deeper than the surface of the planets. We go into the fixed stars and the asteroids from the magic you're born for reading. And I have an eclipse sale on right now. You can grab it, check the description box below. Um, I think I'm gonna keep it up for another few days because a lot of people are liking it. And it's really deeply discounted. 40% off talks about the next year and a half to two years of your life based on the new Gemini and Sagittarius eclipse cycle that we just began this, this year. Uh, in earnest, we really begin it this fall uh, on the November 30th lunar eclipse. And we'll change some area of your life significantly over the next couple of years. All right, ciao, ciao for now. Oh, I, I still got my thing up. <laughs> Let me say a proper goodbye. <laughs>